Board of Directors special meeting, Tuesday, May 8th, 2012. And we need to do a roll call. Karen Machado. James Fisher. Tess Fitzgerald's present. Denise Gallant. Keith Gudger. Here. Joe Hall. Here. Jennifer Pittman. Here. Matilda Rand. Here. Dory Steinman. Here. Adam Wade. Here. Okay, at this point, I'd like to have any oral communications from the audience. Anyone? Thank you. Number three is consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to consent and regular agendas. As the first item, I would like to ask the board to make findings that a matter arose subsequent to the posting agenda that needs immediate attention to avoid detriment to the interests of the corporation and or the public interest. And that would be to add 9.1, appointment of executive director search committee. Can I'll I? make that motion. Okay. I'll second, second it. it. Okay. Is there any discussion from the audience? Anyone? I'd like to discuss it under when it comes up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, th I, I think that putting all the eggs in one basket can be a tricky thing at this point. So uh, plan B and, and even uh, beyond that, I, I think having some sort of uh, leadership uh, more than, than what is presently happening would, would be a good thing. So um, I think it would be a good idea to set up a search committee. Uh, it will be difficult, no doubt about that. It's not going to be easy to find anybody, but <clears throat> I think we should be looking. Okay. So the motion is to add this item to the agenda. Is there any discussion from the board? Okay. Can we have a vote then? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So noted. Mm -hmm. Do we want to discuss any additions or deletions to the consent agenda? Yes, it does. Um, I wanted to, um, at the last meeting under um, the item relating to board member requests for specific items to appear on the next agenda, I had requested that the issue of the appointment of a board clerk be placed on, the, the, on this agenda, and I don't see it here. So. Um, I would like to see that added to item four, which I'm going to ask the chair to pull anyways, if that's acceptable yes. to the, the board. My recollection was in open session that we said this would come back yes. to this mm -hmm. meeting. We did. Do we need a motion or anything to add that on here? I'll make the motion that the uh, appointment of the board clerk be on the regular agenda today. Okay. Be added to consent item four. To, to add as a consent item. Yeah, and then that's, that's with the job description. Yes. Yeah. Okay, do I have a second? <coughs> I second. No, I'm sorry, I didn't have any discussion, but we, it sounds like we have a second. Is there any discussion? Thanks. Okay, any discussion on the board? Sure. I'm going to vote no because I'd like to talk about these issues at the end of the agenda after we've had our closed session first. Uh, I'm not in a position right now to talk about that prior to us having our closed session. So I'm going to vote no. Um, you could ask the person who made the, the amendment if they session. wanted to amend it. Where's the closed session? Well, if we were going to pull oh. an item from the consent agenda, which I will be asking the chair to do, it would go. At the end of the regular, but I guess that's still before the closed session. The chair would have the discretion to place it on anywhere on the agenda if it's been pulled off of the consent agenda. Okay. If you do that, I'll support the motion. Okay. If it's after the closed session. But you, you understand that we, that motion hasn't been made yet to pull a consent agenda item? No, I know. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? Okay. Can we have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 As opposed? Okay. And I'd like to request the chair put that item for consideration after the uh, completion of the closed session. 
Okay. 13.1. Is you that need a second on that? Is that a motion? He doesn't need to make a motion. No, I just request. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm happy to do that. So four becomes, and 4.1 become 13.1? Or just 4.4 .4. 4 comes 13.1. Okay. So we are left with just number five on the consent agenda. Is that correct? Okay. Is there any discussion in the audience on number five? Um, how about from the board? Discussion number five. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, if there's no further discussion, then I will ask those who are in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I pass. Okay, number six, the fiscal year 2012-13 work plan and budget. Do you want to speak to that? Uh, what I tried, uh, what I did for this uh, uh, outing uh, was I put together a, a year long plan as opposed to the six month plan and uh, put together what uh, uh, moving forward with the exploration of the merger as part of the plan. And so the budget breaks out basically two six-month periods where uh, the first six months of, would be during the exploration of uh, the merger and the second six months is assuming that the merger goes forward. And so you see uh, different things in terms of, of uh, different costs of different positions, the position title, things like that might change. Now, uh, granted, in the exploration of a merger, there clearly may be changes in this process, but right now this is uh, what we feel to be the best uh, approximation of where we're going to be during the next year. Okay. Any discussion from the audience? Okay. And, uh, any discussion from the board on the, now we're looking at the plan and the budget as one item? Yes. It could it'd break it apart if you like, but just, yeah. Is there an opinion from the board? Would it be fine as one item, or should it be two one items? Okay. Um, hopefully everyone's had a chance to review it. Is there any discussion? Okay. Um, anyone want to make a motion to approve it? Oh. I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay. To approve what? The, the plan uh, and the budget. Uh, budget for that she just presented. And work plan. Item and work six. plan. Activities plan. Number budget. six. Just a, to be complete. That's all. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'd like to abstain. Pardon? I'd like to abstain because I need to study it more. I okay. mean, I've studied it, but. <coughs> okay, item seven, long-term work plan and budget. Uh, this is, is uh, the document that really talks about what CTV would look like after in a post-DIVCO world. And what it talks about, this is, is the, the work plan that the committee put together, talking about how we would, would basically take our model and in a way just really turn it upside down in terms of being the place that would make accessible the equipment, the facilities, the training, and basically eliminate what we do in terms of any kind of unpaid production. So all of our production would obviously have to uh, make money for us, uh, would you know, to cover its costs. And what we felt that we had the potential to make money on was uh, training as we set up in a facility where we would have uh, access to a, a great training center. And um, 
equipment rental. We're going to be starting that in the budget. And the work plan you just approved will be charging for our HD cameras. And we see ourselves charging as we move forward with um, uh, the different equipment rental, studio rental, edit space, and things like that. The uh, one cost that we have, uh, that we would have the expectation that would be covered by the client would be uh, government meetings. Uh, those would have to, those costs would be covered by uh, the client requesting, and that's how we run it for uh, basically. That's how we run it now. Okay. Okay. Is there any discussion from the audience? Okay. About discussion on the board. Did we have a chance to look at? It? Yes, Joe. Um, actually. I it's going to be a change, and I'm glad it was laid out. So I want to thank the committee who worked on it for doing the work to kind of start this discussion going. I didn't have anything particular to say because the challenges ahead are going to be so significant in terms of how this operated. This is just a way to lay it out and put it in front of people to think about. So I, I, I have no specifics. I just wanted to recognize that there was work to do this and thank the folks that did it. I noticed that you, uh, the idea that we had offered during the um, um, retreat about the collective of mentors and, and learners. Yes. I see that you incorporated that, and uh, I think that is a, a very unique way of looking at it, and I'm, I'm pleased that you like that idea. Any further discussion? So, can we have a motion to approve? The long-term work plan and budget, item seven. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Someone that works Somebody on else second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second the motion. Okay. Okay. Can we, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. <clears throat> now, number eight is review and approve details of member vote on merger with CMAP. I sent out additional material uh, yesterday to you about this to help us kind of walk through this process. I've been in uh, contact with Morgan Taylor, who's our attorney, and he has uh, pulled the uh, language from the bylaws that would be affected by this change and he is waiting for us to either approve or uh, the way that we approve this and he will then be able to go back and put together ballot language for us so that's what our process has been over the last uh, couple of days since the last meeting so one of the things we need the to, first thing we need to do is declare a date of record and for people who haven't been through the election process the date of record just declares the date where you have determined who is an eligible voter and eligible voters are made up of members in good standing so let's say if we declare tomorrow the date of record what that does is say that everyone who's a member tomorrow is eligible to vote in this election. It also starts a clock for us. We will have to have the vote between 30 and 75 days from our date of record. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the next thing you'd have to do is figure out between that period of time, between the 30 and 75 days, when you want to have the deadline for the written ballot. And I think that it would be great to figure out in that process, um, <clears throat> give yourself enough time to um, have informational meetings for members, to craft the ballot, to get all that work done. So give yourself some time for that. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. The language for the um, ballot is, I think, one of the most um, uh, it, it will be the, the probably the biggest decision you make about this. Uh, what we need to know before we craft that language is to determine, does the board of directors simply want to ask the members to give up basically their governance rights 
for the purposes of exploring a merger, or do we want to go to the members and ask for them to give up their governance rights and turn them over to the board of directors, period? So how we need to make that decision. I would recommend that we ask the members to turn uh, to basically abdicate their rights to the board of directors, period. Because as we go forward with this merger, if we find that it falls away, it will still fall to the board of directors to basically create a new entity to be able to move forward. So I think uh, I would recommend that. And then the last thing that needs to be done is to appoint a uh, inspector of elections. And you can appoint one to three people, and uh, that would be someone who would oversee the election process. Will it be a nice explanation as to why we are doing this? Because a lot of people probably have no clue that anything's wrong, anything's going to change, or whatever. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons that if, let's say we declare the date of record to be tomorrow, and then we try to set the election in 30 days, probably won't give us enough time to craft the documents, because the document we craft needs to be looked at by the city and the county. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, all obviously approved by our board of directors. And so that is going to take a little bit of time to get that turned around. Mm -hmm. So we will, and then uh, we need to get that out to our members, have membership meetings, be able to talk to people about their concerns, their issues with this issue. It's a big deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know, t stepping back, uh, at our last meeting, we discussed. A proposal to have a merger with CMAP, and I don't know if you know how many people, if they're watching or don't know anything about it. But there's going to be a transition in how uh, community TV is funded, and one of the options we're looking at is to merge because we're going to have to cut our overhead and costs and a whole bunch of other aspects of how the group operates. And I think this is a good method to look at that and try to transition in terms of um, what you're saying, and before I do that, are we open to discuss now? I don't want to go on if, if you haven't called for members to discuss. Do you want me to go ahead? What, what is the question exactly? Well, in, anyhow, I think uh, I was, that's why we're doing it, but I thought I better stop now and uh, uh, see, because I have a few other things I'd like to say about this before, but I don't know if it's I'm in the proper order right now to go on speaking. So, okay. uh, just let you me know. You want to discuss the merger, or you want to discuss the item eight? Uh, I want to discuss item eight, but I want to talk about the wording and <laughs> why we're doing the wording the way we are or may propose. And so that's what I'd like to talk about now. The wording of of the ballot measure. Okay. Um, did you propose any wording for the ballot? We have no, we have not yet proposed wording. That will uh, once we will uh, once we make a conclusion here tonight. I'll go back to uh, Morgan Taylor and he will uh, propose wording to us. Okay. So what we're looking at is a date of record, a deadline for written vote from members. It does say three ballot language for written vote. Uh, in terms of, of what are we what are we Option. instructing? Morgan to, to uh, look at in terms of ballot language, and then we will. And that's what I want to talk about when we're open. Okay. So why don't we take public comment? So um, I just came back from vacation, and this was quite a, a bombshell yeah. for me. Um, I'm feeling incredibly conflicted. There's a my idealism says no, this is anti-democratic, and it takes away from the community aspect of, of the station. But I'm also a pragmatist, and when I look at the actual reality, <laughs> how many meetings have I been the only one coming up to address the Board of uh, <laughs> I just gave you all promotions. <laughs> We're not that bad, August. <laughs> anyway, you, you see my point, and this is why I'm conflicted. I, I think it's a, a great theory. Um, it, it hasn't really worked out as well as I would have liked it to in terms of member participation. And with all the challenges we're facing, I, I'm afraid at this point I, I'm just going to let go of my idealism and say, well, what else are we going to do? 
I don't like it. And I know others of you probably feel the same way. It's kind of like, well, we're kind of moving in a direction a away from the core participatory democracy that to me is a very important component of this organization. And the pragmatist says that don't mean anything if the organization doesn't survive. So at, at this point in time, subject to, ch to change of course, I, I think I would support the motion of asking the members to abdicate the governance of the bylaws. Thank you. Ron, could I ask, are you saying permanently or for the duration yes, of the merger? Yes, permanently, not part two of what Marianne said. Thank you. I, I just think in terms of moving forward, there's so many things that have to be changed that I just have to trust the board of directors to keep our mission on their radar and, and be, you know, nimble enough to make these moves. So if we have to call an election every time important bylaws come up, it, it would be, you know, very uh, complicated. Thank you, Ron. <coughs> yes, Matilda? Um, I think probably what uh, Ron is talking about and what some of us feel here too, and I'm sure that's uh, among the membership uh, place also, is trust. And I believe that uh, if, if we ask the members to abdicate their, um, their vote or their, their um, say-so during the time of that we established a merger, giving us the trust to do that, once we have done that very well, then I think uh, the membership may, may, may abdicate uh, their rights to change the bylaws from then on. But we have to gain that trust. And, you know, just giving it all over, I'm not so sure, A, it goes over. I mean, you know, people say, may say no for that particular reason. But they may say yes on, okay, we're, we're entrusting you to do this merger right and to come out good for us, for the whole community, for the merger, you know, do that well, and then you know membership may have enough trust in us that any changes in bylaws from then on are entrusted to the board too. They may, if you do the whole thing, they may just say no because there is that trust issue. But they will understand that in order to do the merger well, we need to really focus and concentrate and be very specific and not have to go every time back and forth to the membership. Let's do that well and then ask for the rest. I don't know who is next. <laughs> actually, let's go this way and I'll be next. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I can see what Matilda is saying, but actually the speaker we had can express my thoughts. And my concerns are a little different uh, and they're mostly that it's going to take a lot of funding to do this. And if we, I think basically I see the vote as a vote whether you move forward into, in a different direction or you don't. And if they vote no, then this organization will either transition or some other organization will take its place. But I don't think, I would support spending a lot of money to move forward if we had to have the potential of having to go back. And I, I have no problem doing it, but I just think it's going to be very expensive. It's going to take a lot of time, and there isn't a lot of time left. And um, I would take the latter uh, option that uh, the executive director mentioned in terms of how to move forward. I, I think it, it's kind of now or never in terms of how we do this. And I think you're right. Some people may take that point. They vote no. And then there are other options that can be explored and see what happens. But I think this is the way to approach the merger. And at some point, you have to uh, ha allow your board to have the freedom to try to do what's best for the organization. And I think there'll be different opinions on this group throughout the process. So I don't think points of view will be suppressed. But I think we'll have a process that's timely enough to move this into the next stage before time catches up with CTV. May you respond to that? Is that okay, Tess? Okay. Uh, I mean, we're, uh, we would be asking the membership to abdicate there during the time that we're setting up the merger, 
that we don't constantly have to go back, you know, mm -hmm. if, if bylaws need to be changed at that point. And um, once it is successful and we've gained a trust, then it may be, you know, a good precedent of, we, you know, the board is doing what's right for the community, for the different funders and, and us. So uh, it's just how far do you want it to go and how, f how how successful do you want to be with this vote? Well, uh, if you did all, or let's, you know, this is a very specific direction project. Do the merger, do it well. If you do it well, we can give you the rest. But. I, 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 I'll respond to you and then I think there are other people that want to talk. Okay. I, don't, I don't see um, a path forward with two elections. Because uh, there are gonna have to be some hard decisions made and no matter what you do in this process, somebody, will probably uh, not enjoy the results. Others will. And I think you kind of have to say this is an option. If you want to do it, we'll move forward with us doing it. If you don't want to do it, uh, vote no. And just leave it at that. That's, those are my thoughts. I don't want to take any more time on it. Okay. Jennifer? Okay. Yeah, my thoughts are that I really we need to present it as if we ha they have no choice. Because I don't believe that they do. I think the. Kathy Bisbee has clearly said she wants to know whether the membership is behind the idea of the merger right off the bat, as soon as possible. And if they're, if they're not against it, I mean, if they're against it, then, you know, I mean, then it's over. There's no, we don't have time to go back. I mean, this is a, this is like a one-shot deal. So I feel like if we ask for this vote, um, then perhaps during our infor information meetings and our educational meetings with membership, we could ask them if they have, I mean, we've been asking people all along for their best, you know, best ideas. If, are you willing, do you know, do you have any ideas? Do you want to participate? We've been asking people that. And I just feel like this is the time we need to really say, we don't really have another choice. Tess. Um, I think that before we really go down the road of pursuing a merger, we need to ask the membership. And if asking the membership is asking them to take a vote on ceding their rights under to determine the bylaws, that's what we need to do. I mean, that's kind of how serious is everybody here. And um, it's one thing for us as a board to be serious about it, but in the current structure that we're set up with right now, we really need to know what the membership's going to allow. Because if they don't allow it, we don't go forward with this plan, and we either, we need to come up with something else very, very quickly. Um, so I would like to make a motion. It, I, I'm going to exclude one part of it because I don't really have an answer for that, and I'll leave that to the rest of the board. But for the purposes of this motion, um, I would like to move that we declare the date of record for a membership vote approving exploration of the merger and formation of a new organization as May 24th, and that we declare the deadline for written vote from members to be June 25th, and that we appoint Inspector of Elections to be Keith Gujer and um, Matilda Rand. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Second. And we have a second from Joe. Okay. Before we vote, can I ask a question? Yes. Does that sound, I mean, I know you won't be here, but does that sound like that's a doable time period? Uh, yes. I mean, without an executive director and I, I think with us, that looks like that will go cat I, th I okay. think we have to move that, and while I'm not here trying to put together materials that can go out to uh, staff, I think Kathy uh, from CMAP would be willing to help us out with some things, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then I have one, one comment if I could make. Um, as I recall from reading this, we could have three election inspectors, and I just wanted to see if anybody else on the board wanted to be an election inspector. I'm not going to be around, so that's <laughs> that, but I just thought we should ask if anybody else wanted to do it. I don't hear any. What does that involve? And, and those of us who were appointed, who <laughs> didn't even know about it. Do we have a say so? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could decline. I just figured that, um, you know, the most important thing about an inspector of elections is integrity and impartiality. 
And so the two of you came to mind, and that's why I put you out there. I, I wasn't necessarily saying you endorsed that, but as a board member, I think that you would probably offer an independent perspective of the process, which is what's required of that position. That is correct. And I, I believe you both represent the members directly and are not in an appointed position. I think that's another good reason. Mm -hmm. No other volunteers. So I would like to ask um, Tess here. You, in your motion, you put a date of record, a deadline, and an inspector of elections, but you did not address ballot language. Is that correct? That's Second. correct. Okay. She I just that off on the rest of you. I wanted to clarify what the motion was. That's to exactly what she said. I, I did take um, So let's see. I call think, for the question. I'm going to call for the question here. And anybody? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And just and abstained. So. We're okay. Um, so we're left with ballot language for the written vote. And that was what we just had a lot of discussion right. on. Um, I would like could, to interject one thing. Could, could you repeat what, yeah, what, what the options Not were? Really. Well, what we had talked about at the last meeting was putting out to a vote, uh, and Kathy Bisbee had also requested that we put out to a vote the membership's willingness to have the board of directors act in their behalf and to move forward with a merger. What I think, uh, so we can couch it in that way, but basically if we move forward with that, uh, what we're asking is that the board of directors has the power to take apart the organization and reconstitute it as a different organization. And to do that, or, or if they do that, they, you could opt to do it in a way that members no longer have the capacity to vote in board members. No, you know, in that process, uh, the member's power could be taken away. So I feel that it needs to be clear to the members what they're being asked. We can ask them about a merger. But ultimately, if we ask them for that control through the, through the process of a merger, we're asking them to abdicate their control right. and take whatever organization comes out at the other end of this process. But there were two options, right? Well, what I'm saying is we can ask them if they are for us going forward with a merger and would be willing to support it by abdicating their, their rights. But I think if we, if in terms of, of putting it in that way, we are basically asking them. Mm -hmm. To, to give up their power unless the option would be that um, you would say to them, um, we would guarantee that we would still have a, a membership governed organization at the end of the merger. And I don't know if that's possible. I don't see any reason why not. <coughs> Why don't we test the waters here with a motion? And Marianne, correct me if I'm wrong if I don't say the language exactly correctly because I think it's important that everybody understands it and that. Uh, I'll move that the election language contain uh, the elements of the merger and that as part of the merger and to facilitate it, the members agree to transfer their authority to approve the merger and subsequent organizational structure to the board of directors. Is that yes. clear enough? <clears throat> That's my motion. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Um, is there any public comment? Okay. Any other board comment? Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't believe that it's absolutely necessary that there is no member control after the initial setup. Uh, I don't. I don't see. You know, I actually see maybe a uh, a two part, and people can vote for this or for that. It so give people the option. The merger obviously is in both. In the first one. 
you know, the, the, the structure of the, uh, the new organization will still include, you know, we have to think about it, still include member, a certain member control, and in the second one, none. So then there would be an option for people. I do not think that if, you know, as we get further with the merger, that, that there is a necessity to completely exclude the, the members from any kind of control. I think it is possible and I think we need to leave that open. If we only give people the option of it's going to be merger and you have no, nothing to say anymore. I mean, basically that's... I don't think that's the option. The, well, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Wait, Matt, we're, we're all members. I represent Capitola, but I am a member. I am a producer of programs. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I wear two hats. I'm a member, and then I'm also representing one of the entities here. So it's not that we're against members. I mean, we're, no, we're no, all no. members, right? We have to be. Right. Yeah, so I don't understand what you're saying. I, I, I don't know. Is it possible in a in a ballot language to even put forward language that says we and we encourage? I mean, members, member involvement, member discussion, member um, ideas. I mean, is there is that could that is that even have room? Is that a place? That place in a ballot? No. I, I guess I just I don't I think up to this point, members have the option to be involved and they haven't been, but they they have the option and then. Even if this passed, members would still have the option to be involved, and um, and that would be encouraged. I would hope in, in all the educational meetings. The other thing I was just I wanted to uh, question is, do we have an idea that CMAP member? I mean, CMAP has strong membership control and would even be willing to accept uh, member-controlled organization. I just want to comment after Jennifer's done. Do uh, we have any idea about that? I, I don't believe they would. Because that's, that's the sense I got. I mean, it, the sense I got is Kathy, from her from her um, note, was she just wants to know whether the members will support it and then move forward with it. You know, I, I, I think the reason I made the motion is I want it very clear. And if you don't make it clear, people can't make a choice. And if they feel that this isn't the right choice, then maybe this will energize them to do something different. Because right now, uh, there have been a few of you taking all the work to do this, and if there's a better option out there and they vote no, then we'll see what that better option is. But I think it needs to be a clear choice and a method that allow it to go forward. Because I'm afraid we could spend, you know, $15,000, and then at the end, people start, you know, debating small points, and it just all falls apart so there'd be a lot of wasted effort it's better to have a vote now make it as clear as we can and uh, see see what people believe Mr. so I, I guess I think that the board needs to decide whether we think it's even an option to have that second option because if if we don't think that a merger is possible with the, um, with allowing the temporary control then we shouldn't put it on the ballot and make it a second choice I mean, I, I think that if, if it's not a feasible option for the organization to stay to merge, then or to stay alive at all, then I don't think we should put it on that. Maybe that should be on the ballot. If you're voting no, what is your suggestion for our future? <laughs> <laughs> if you're or so smart, you? figure out something no, different. Where were you? Well, you'd have to write a line for an essay. <laughs> well, there's one thing I'd like to say is I've, I've sampled a small number of members about this issue and the feedback I've gotten is no. That's what I wonder. And if I think that the members are intelligent and, and concerned about this organization and I think like Ron said, faced with the absolute reality at the end, they were going to be reasonable operators and do what the right thing is. The question is, is that going to happen by June 25th? And I, my concern is, is that we'll go out there with this language and fail, 
and then what? If we can come out with language that will allow us to succeed in some form, maybe not 100%, but in some form, and then let time and reason do the rest to get us the rest of the way, I think that's a better plan. But I'm, I'm just suggesting that's one way to look at it. There's, I'm open for suggestions. And we have a specific motion on that. Yeah, I'd, let's just test the water on this one. I mean, I, I don't disagree with any of you, but I think the members have to be faced, and I'm a member too, we all are, yes. with this choice. And it's going to be a lot of work. And I don't want to proceed down a path spending money and doing things without knowing that there's authority to succeed. Because if you go down the line, like I said, there are going to be decisions made that you can't please everybody, and people will, you know, have their comments, and that's fine. And there's no reason they can't come and talk to us and go from there. And I think we need to send a clear message to the people who we may be uh, merging with that we're not going to be a party that is hesitant down the line for whatever reason it could be. And uh, I trust the rest of us to debate this fully enough to represent the point of view. If the members don't trust us, then, you know, so be it. We just sit back and two years from now, um, that's kind of the end of community <coughs> TV. Um, I want us to, and I've said that earlier, I want us to set ourselves up for success. I agree with Keith that if at this point you're proposing and saying fear factor, fear factor, fear factor, if you don't do it, we go under, uh, you have to do this because we say this is the best thing. Set ourselves up for success. Give us, give the board the power, the authority, not the power, the authority to work on the merger to the best <coughs> Of our, but do not exclude the possibility that in whatever we come up with the merger, off the bat, saying there will be never, ever any say-so by the members about any bylaws, about any decisions. I would not want to exclude that right off the bat because I think people are going to say no because they don't have time to let it all sink in. Give us, give us the authority to work seriously about the merger. The merger is the thing that needs to happen. But do not take all the rights away right off the bat. I think we're going to be more successful if we ask for the authority to seriously work on the merger. While we're doing that, making changes to the organization and the bylaws and the rules and everything else that, that's needed but don't exclude it forever. I'm under the impression that the county and the city are gonna be making a decision whether to pull an RFP in July. That's really where the fire's at. I mean, the, this organization has had since 2006 to deal with the reality that we know is coming and um, it's only at this late date that we're starting to have conversations now. Maybe we're probably seven, eight months away from the county being able to uh, pull the contract. Um, we plan ahead. Um, that's something that we're gonna, uh, we've been looking at and that we're gonna be actively working. So um, I think that this, the county and the city wanna know what level of commitment this organization has to really dealing with this huge problem other than, I, I mean, I think that's where the fire's at, is, is that the agencies that contract with this agency want to know what the membership is willing to do in order to stay in business. As it sits now, the membership makes that decision. Um, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying the time has run out to continue to explore avenues that have no tangible outcomes. So I think that's kind of what, where the fire's at. And, and I don't think it's a threat, and I don't think it's fair. I think it's we have a responsibility to the public as the governmental agencies to assure that this service continues. 
And if this organization has an inability to do that through lack of planning or vision or whatever, we have to go somewhere else. We don't want to see that happen. We hope, I can't tell you how much hope there is that this fleshes out, but it can't even be embarked upon unless we know what the membership's willing to do. You know, I, I kind of like to call a question. I only have one more sentence. It's kind of a choice between hope and the unknown. And we have a possibility and we don't. And the, probably the best way to create the hope is that way. And what you're saying is true. There may be a backlash, but at some point there has to be a decision. And I, I didn't want to bring up the threat because I don't think that's the way to deal with this. But the reality is this, some form of this organization will exist in the future one way or the other. This is the way for this organization to transition in hope. I, I think I kept that in two sentences, so excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Long sentences. Well, if you, if you were speaking in a different language, you would do all these semicolons. Oh, it would slow me down. <laughs> read, read Kant, and then you, you, you get two pages of one sentence. <laughs> Okay, and, well, I, and I, I just want to go on the record of saying that I'm, you know, in favor of the merger, and so whatever that takes, I think it's in, important that we get behind that. I understand the points that were made, but I think we get behind the merger, we get behind it. Okay. Call for the question. I'm going to call for it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to have a roll call? Or uh, probably would be a good idea. Let's have a roll call. Um, so. Oh, you want me to do that? Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> You're the secretary. All right. Acting. Aye. Uh, Pittman. Aye. Wade. Aye. Goodger. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Hall. Jo aye. Steinman. Aye. Rand. No. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Can you vote aye? So yes, I believe ma if I'm We've covered the four items then with the two rec with the two motions. Okay. And I'd like to move on to the next item on the agenda. Nine. Review and approve letter to CMAP Board of Directors per Kathy Bisbee. Oh, okay. I wondered if I, because I kept looking for that. Looking for the letter. Yeah, <laughs> I've got it here. We've, we've been. Um, I oh no, this is a different one. This it's is a new one. This, this, the other one was like a question and answer. Yeah. Oh, this is different. Separate. Here, here, here. Here, here. Does Ron get a copy? Yes, he does. Good. And there are other members on camera. If they want a copy, there's a couple more copies here. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I wonder if we shouldn't. Uh, I hate to do dramatic readings, but uh, this is kind of important. So I wonder if Marianne wants to. First off, Marianne, you'll give us some background of where the language came from. Yes. Uh, I have been exploring a, a variety of different um, uh, consultants who deal with uh, mergers and uh, integrations of organizations. And this language came from one of those people, Mary Hyland, uh, gave us this sample language. And, uh, uh, and what we would like is if, if we uh, give this letter to CMAP, that they would do the same, that we would uh, both agree to the conditions, and I can, uh, I think I can read this, get, get through it here. Uh, Community Television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit corporation, commits itself for a period of six months from July 1st, 2012, to a good, to good faith negotiations toward a merger with the Community Access, Media Access Partnership, a nonprofit corporation. During that time, CTV will not enter into merger notifications with any other party, nor will it make material changes affecting the corporation, its leadership, or its financial commitments without fully informing CMAP in advance. CTV's delegation to the merger negotiations shall consist of the following board number of board members, list names, <clears throat> and representatives from the city and county of Santa Cruz. At the end of the negotiation period, if not sooner, the committee will submit its report and recommendations to the full board. The six-month time period may be extended by a vote of the board upon request by the negotiations committee. Yes, Jennifer. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to get public comment first. Um, yeah, it sounds good to me because it, it's 
the operative words in there are without fully informing CMAP in advance. Right. So we can do all these things. It's just about information. Now, I'm assuming that they are going to make a letter like this to us. Yes, I think that's what Marianne just said. We will ask for the same pack from them. Oh, I didn't hear that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, it, it looks pretty good. So. Thank you, Ron. Hey, Jeff. Two questions. Um, one is, when we list the board members, do we list that there's, uh, we're hoping for a Watsonville appointee in the process, or uh, do we it, say it, anything about? What we are listing is the board members that are going to be on the committee that are going to be doing the negotiations uh, for this merger. Mm -hmm. So it would be the question of who among the full board would be on, on that. Okay. And um, the uh, city and the county of uh, Santa Cruz will have appoint representatives to be on this committee as well. Okay. And, and just by uh, point of clarification, for the city, it'll be a representative of the city manager's office. Yes. Yeah. And my other question was, I thought that um, Monterey was also considering merging, and what do we do? They are. They have not. Uh, they have not had a sit down with Kathy or I yet. That'll probably happen towards the end of June. And so right now, this is, these are the parties, uh, CMAP and, and us are the parties that are going forward. If uh, AMP uh, decides to, to move forward, there's nothing about uh, this letter that would, would keep them from doing, from doing that or uh, being part of this exploration. They, there's not, it doesn't, it will, will not enter into merger negotiations with any other party, does it preempt No. That? Well, if, if in fact we decide that AMP is going to be a part of this, we would amend the letter to okay. incorporate. But right now, these are the two parties that are interested in moving forward. Great. Yes. Uh, I'm concerned this is a little premature. I think we should have a vote of the membership first. Um, and that the purpose of the dates that I threw out for the membership vote were that we would know the outcome of the vote by the time we have our next regular board meeting. And I think at that time this should come. And if the, board, the, if the membership has indicated that they're willing to go forward with this and do what it, it takes for that to happen, then this would be appropriate. But I think absent the membership's approval, it's a little premature. Uh, I have a question. Did uh uh, CMAP asked that we appoint a group already or, or yes. they just they did they did so they actually made a specific request that we do this what would happen if because I think test points is, is a valid one uh, but what what would would there be any harm on their end if we appointed people conditionally in other words uh, before the vote of the members I, I think all we can do is yeah, is, maybe, is maybe, try that. maybe the way to blend what she's thinking with that is just to con just say if upon approval of the uh, membership vote, these will be the negotiating committee. So they at least know it is, but they're not appointed until after that vote. So we don't uh, uh, jump forward because I think it'd be good to kind of set it up and uh, see what's happening, but condition it that that happen, you know, they become permanent appointments or whatever. The term is that's a little august for that, but uh, that. And in terms of who, I would suggest the chair and vice chair, and then uh, appoint uh, an alternate from the membership too. So in case somebody can't go, you have essentially two plus an alternate. I won't participate because the city's already represented. So, oh. um, so that's that. I think uh, that. But those are my kind of mm -hmm. you know varied thoughts on this. One of the reasons this came up is that the CMAP asked for this board to state in a motion our intent to continue with the merger or not. Yeah. And that was what this letter addressed. But the question is, back to Tess, is this letter go too far in your opinion then? It's, it's beyond saying we as a board think this is a good idea. Well, I mean, it's asking for, I, I guess, <clears throat> Wouldn't we have to agendize the appointment of the committee members? Yeah, you know, I, I, and I, the rec I want to. I was looking at the language of the request, and I don't know that it goes that far. It says, "I'd like to see you and Marianne set up a session with." Or, no, I'm sorry. I'd like a letter from the board indicating that the majority endorses moving in this direction, and who will be the the representative of all interactions with CMAP moving forward. Does that mean that we're appointing a negotiations committee, or we're identifying who's working with Kathy? To move this forward, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, there are all sorts of different thoughts on this. Uh, well, I think I think Joe and Tess, you know, identify exactly what's going on. Uh, I don't think there is any doubt that this board um, uh, wants to go into uh, good faith negotiations, and that should say, state, you know, a lot of this needs to be said, but it needs to be stated in there that it's the board, uh, you know, depending, you know, pending uh, uh, full member uh, approval, but the board is going into the, and we can already start working with but we cannot uh, make all the changes after you know before the, the members have given us the authority yeah and I, I think that that lang adding that language is part of it i just don't know that the uh, appointment of a negotiations committee like tess was saying goes a little bit too far right. i'm for the letter w in support of the merger mm -hmm. I just don't know, and it, that's a tr it's a tricky question because Marianne's leaving, and so who is the person who's working with? Kathy yeah, I know. Point? I think so. Could, could we establish? Um, a, I mean, I, th I think we can't wait till a membership vote to even get started. So could we establish a temporary negotiating committee, and then and use can include that language that Joe mentioned about pending a membership um, vote. But just at least have some people who are already geared up, ready to go, and start right. start talking. Okay. Well, but I think you know, it's not necessarily a negotiations committee right. it's a because we're committee. not we're representatives. representatives of you know to 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 go into um, the merger exploration. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's I I think if you soften it a little bit and put in there pending you know uh, member uh, approval. But I don't see any reason why we couldn't get started. And temporary. It's all temporary. And temporary, right? Okay. Yes. So are we under the impression that CMAP requires this before our next meeting or they're not going to talk about it anymore? I mean, I, I'm not really sure where the fire is on this. If we're all sitting in an open meeting saying, yes, we're going to ask our membership to take this action to you know, move forward in a right. very tangible and serious way, mm -hmm. yes, we all support it. Right. Um, Maybe that's what the letter should say. Yeah. Yeah. This. Just I think seems the fire is coming from their next board of directors meeting. I think she wants to. Be able to I, and that was on the 14th next them. week, and they yeah. would like some of us to be there, right? Right. Exactly. And I think that's like where the, the urgency in yeah. this letter of support comes from. It's some kind of a formal letter from us as the board supporting the merger. And I agree that maybe the language should include that we are we're supporting it so much that we're putting this out to a full membership vote. <laughs> well, well. Also, maybe just put down and uh, pending the membership vote, uh, the representatives to discuss with you and just list the names. Because yeah. if somebody wants to call up, yeah. who do they call? Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. well, were you saying, Tess, that without being a, a separate agenda item, we couldn't appoint people even as temporary? Or well, it just—it's not agendized. Right. I mean, right. so. Technically, unless the power has some, or the chair has a power, the chair who's not here has the power to appoint, create and appoint a committee, we're walking on shaky ice. I mean. Well, why, why don't we do this? Okay. Uh, well, I the, think Tess may have a point, because I argued this point with her last time. <laughs> <laughs> and, However, yeah, okay, let's it see says what here, review and approve letter. In the letter it okay. says, okay. so it's not exactly not agendized. Well, the letter doesn't talk about, I mean, I didn't have this at the time that I got this. Delegation. And it doesn't say, a reasonable person wouldn't have the expectation reading this that there was going to be a negotiation committee appointed out of this action I item. I know. Okay. Just think definitely. So there, there's two <laughs> items as I see it. Is, um, if we approve a letter, do we put in language saying dependent on member approval I, that's and two what do we do about designating people to talk to cmap hmm. well a letter reads the delegation to the merger negotiations committee it doesn't say that they are the merger negotiations committee it's just there, a delegation there are delegation to the merger negotiation shall consist of the following well, board members. So wouldn't that be all right? Um, do, we, do we have to set up a committee? Can we just say, and we have we have a few people who are who are work, willing to begin work on this right away. I mean, does it have to be a negotiating committee? It can't be. 
who the are, contact person who are does, temporarily right? representing until the our members vote. Yeah. Delegation. Well, t Tessa's point is, if you don't have specific language on the I item, know. you can't do it in I terms know. of Brown. So I think that's a correct point. Yeah. This is kind of where your chair steps in sometimes and said, I'll take care of that and just, uh, um, you know, yes, communicate yes, that the, these are the people that we'll be bringing up when the time comes. And uh, so you're saying that the chair would say, these are the people that I will nominate to this committee at the next board meeting. Yeah, that yeah. way. And uh, okay. I think that's okay, isn't it, Tess? Yes. Okay, good. I'll ask you, Matilda. Well, no, no, to ask Tess. <laughs> no, you agree with me. I'll you were talking to me? No. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to rewrite this so it sounds something closer. Because I, I don't know that it would be accurate to say that, you know, before we have a membership vote either, that we're not going to um, make any material changes affecting the corporation, its leadership, mm -hmm. or financial commitments. I mean, that's a heavy statement to right. make in a yeah. period of extreme uncertainty pending a vote of the membership. I mean, that's just a... That I just pull right out of there. I mean, I don't see a problem with the first sentence. Okay. But the pending the membership vote is the the appointment of the negotiations committee. I would say that. Um, or is it more than that? Upon it's the uh, that. upon the affirmative vote of the membership, the CTV board will appoint a uh, a negotiations committee. Period. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is we could just add it to you know that CTV's delegation to the merger negotiation committee shall be appointed upon you know an affirmative you know, vote of the membership to exactly. proceed with the merger if we just attach it to that one sentence you know, I think I, I, yeah I think the intent I mean that's I, why I haven't been more vigorous in my debate on this I think you can, okay. you can tell me you're interested and then uh, I don't I, I think until I think you're right you could start doing work but it might be if there is a negative vote it might be a, a kind of a waste of time too okay. so it's, you're only talking a short period of time, like Tess said, so I, I withdraw my thought. But I will make a statement when it's done about what my preference would be, uh, but there won't be anything more than that. I think that, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I think that um, if we were just to take out the sentence beginning with during that time, and then change um, the sentence beginning with CTV's delegation, change that to read um, the CTV board of directors so will. So immediately upon an affirmative vote of the uh, membership of Delic uh, point a negotiating group. Well, how about we'll immediately appoint a negotiations committee consist uh, upon the affirmative vote of the membership to yeah. proceed with the merger. Mm -hmm. and consisting of board members and representatives of the city and county of Santa Cruz. Yeah, and just then we can leave the way. last sentence there. I mean, just so long as we take out that during that time sentence and then slightly modify that saying that once the vote comes in from the membership, the next action we take I mean because that'll be on the June agenda right. and then everybody's cool with that process having been properly agendized and can I just ask about the, the sentence uh, with beginning with during that time mm -hmm. why why does that need to be stricken because the uh, uh, the operative words is that just without fully informing CMAP in advance well those actually I've been involved in a merger and this is pretty common language but to be honest, most of this language comes when everybody has full authority to do something, right. not before. Okay. So I, okay. I didn't think in this case it was, I wasn't sense. too concerned one way or the other, but it usually comes later. Okay. I just wouldn't want to put any statements out there that would lead anybody to believe that, um, you know, that if something changed because of the result of the vote or, you know, we came up with some bright idea that, that we weren't acting in good faith. Right. Uh, so figure, take it out. <laughs> Thank you. We're still in good faith. Okay. Do you want to make a motion on this when you're finished? Um, I'll make the motion okay. that we approve the letter with the changes as um, as uh, recited on the record. Yes. As um, recited not on the directed record. as as Tess. No, 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 not not a name as as stated as whatever as stated by Tess that we approve this letter. 
to the CMAC, the Board of Directors of CMAC. I second. Okay. Any further and, discussion? Yeah, just for a point of clarification. Okay, so yes. during that time, that sentence is stricken, and then the next sentence just includes pen upon the <coughs> vote of membership. The next sentence membership. would read: The Community Television Board of Directors will immediately appoint a negotiations uh, committee um, upon the affirmative vote of the membership to proceed with the merger or something along those lines. Yeah, upon I mean, I don't even think we need vote. to say who's going to be represented there. I think it's clear that you know, amongst ourselves that we're going to have some board members and we're going to have some city and county representation on I th that I committee. think it would be good to keep that in there. Yeah, I think a separate Rich sentence. Which consists of okay. several board members. Just so, just consisting of board members. And from the city and county of Santa Cruz. Yeah, or, okay. or you just start a new sentence and say this committee will consist of. I like that. Do we need to kind amend? of a run on sentence at this point? <laughs> Do we need a vote? The queen of the Do we need to amend the motion no, because no, no, of the no. Okay, as, I'm just as, checking. Yeah. She was clarifying what her second. So it's clarified no, to I made yes. a motion. It okay, hasn't been second yet. No, no, okay, well, it's been well, seconded. Yeah. Okay, good. Perfect. And I had a comment under the motion. Since we can't really get too specific, I'd like to to state my preference for the uh, uh, board members and that, and this is just my opinion, so it doesn't have to be agendized. I think uh, the board members should be the chair and the vice chair, and then one other alternate member uh, selected by the board. Because I think you need to have three people during this, because you're going to have all sorts of meetings. It just never ends. So, the, but you know, those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Can I call for the vote, please? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? No. Okay. Motion carries. So we have 9.1, is that correct? Yeah, but that we asked to put off until after the close session. 9.1 is the Executive Director Search Committee. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's a, okay. That's that one was not put off. 14 was put off. I should have asked that that be put off too, but I didn't think about it soon enough. So. Well, I would rather do it afterwards if we could. Fine with me. Yeah. Okay. 13.2? 13.2. 9.1 has got moved to 13.2. <laughs> okay. And then 10, oral report from the board chair or other board members. I don't have a report. I'm not the chair, but I'm acting chair. Any other? Okay. Board member staff request for specific items appear on next regular meeting agenda. Actually. Yeah, so we have, make sure that we have the next time uh, after the vote from the members. Yeah, I think that's That what we, you know, do a couple things. And one of the things is to uh, uh, appoint the, uh, the negotiation committee. And it was something else, right, Tess? There is another item, but it's not do, related to the merger. Do we want to um, state anything about putting together informational sessions with for the membership? That's not on this item. No. That's going to happen in between the 25th of May and okay. or the 24th of May and June. For the next one. The, the thing that was requested was what about our, we're missing a board member from Watsonville? Yeah. Should that be on the agenda or should we, well, what, what do we need to do? Can't we just ask, can't we as a board now ask that, that, that the chair make a phone call call to yeah. the Watsonville and ask well, given, to given the illness of the chair, maybe we, you know, the vice chair can just call up or Mary Ann. Okay. Might even be a good idea to write a letter yeah, yeah. and have it included in the written correspondence of the legislative body to assure that your item gets reviewed and considered. Okay. You never seem to get a representative there that lasts. <laughs> and they're all here two meetings and out. Or they run for run city for council and they're they out. win and they become mayor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're a jumping off ground one way or the other. Okay. okay. Off of what? <laughs> Any announcements? Should the um, I'm sorry. Should the membership vote be an item on the agenda for that June membership meeting, well, so that people have a chance to yeah. weigh in and a report address out. the report or address the board? 
And then also there was um, the other part of the request that I saw from Kathy Bisbee was um, an official communication from the board and ED to the staff regarding this upcoming merger process. Is that something we need we'll to do that in the process of the of the vote? We'll okay. To... Perfect. Thank you. Any announcements? Some of us are going to the tannery. Do we know exactly where at the tannery we're meeting? Uh, Denise is, is that not big here. Room, that big the digital media center? That's it's right. next Th week, right? Yeah. Thursday. No, Thursday. 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 Two days. The day after tomorrow. 12 I would presume it's in uh, Space 110, but I think if you go in the courtyard there, um, you'll, it's not that big. You'll be able to find yeah. where the okay. room is. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't in one of the units or something. What time is it? 12, yeah. 12 to 2. Open to the public? Yep. Do we have to do anything I'll to adjourn? I'll give you my eyes and my ears because I'm forcing I can't be there, but I'd love to. Do we have to do anything to adjourn to closed session, or do we just do that? Now just we're going to adjourn, adjourn this session. No, we're going to. Oh, we have a comment from Ron. <laughs> Actually, uh, <clears throat> I am really in vacation mode. I didn't look at the agenda. I don't know what you're going into closed session for. Uh, employee performance evaluation of the executive director. executive director. Okay. And I also just want, you do need to ask for public comment because public can comment on the subject before you go into closed session. Okay. But I don't have a comment. So. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Are we uh, going to uh, carpool to go to Gilroy? Yes. How many people are going to go? Well, I'm driving, uh, and, I, and I've had a staff person request to go with me. I have three more seats if anyone wants to. It's next Monday, yeah. right? It's next yeah. Monday. We should never got voted on. And the representatives of the city and county of Santa Cruz, or is there going to be representatives from the city? Okay. Well, we're back in the open session, and we were up to report out from closed session that no action was taken in closed session. So we're returning to open session with 13.1, which was consent agenda item four, recommendation of the personnel committee for job description of board clerk. And Tess? Um, I actually reviewed the um, job specification that was approved by the personnel committee and um, made a couple tweaks which I very um, amateurishly did a handwritten strikeout and underline so you could, uh, you could see what suggestions I had to change it. And these suggestions were kind of based on historically what this position has been in this organization, which is pretty much an independent contractor under the control of the board. Um, the, the way that I saw this um, board clerk position being defined, even though it says independent contractor, it would, and, and having gone through personnel committee, it would lead me to believe that it would be something that might be added to our schedule of employee uh, positions in our personnel manual, which is not something that I think we should do. I think we should continue along the lines of having a independently contracted board clerk under the control of the board as a whole. Um, so those are the changes that um, I proposed, and um, I um, if the board accepts this, these changes, um, I would uh, make a motion to <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Joe, is there, um, I understand why you have it under the secretary of the board, because the secretary is the one that takes actions and is responsible for that. But is there any reason why it wouldn't be under the chair, though? Because the chair is the one that has the overall responsibility. I mean, I don't really have a strong feeling, but it just seems a little more linear that way. It's just typically been under the direction of the secretary, because the secretary's description, uh, you know, the secretary of the board's know, description is yeah. to... Okay. Pay and attention it, to that stuff and make sure it's accurate. As whereas I just know, having been a board chair before, it's difficult. You're not listening in the same way that the secretary is. You're mm -hmm. listening to manage the meeting as opposed to okay. the details of what's and happening. It, and it adds an extra load to the chair who already has okay. specific. 
task. And then, then my second question, just because I've had people argue with me over these things, <laughs> uh, it, it, taking out produce and distribute, could that conceivably mean to somebody that all I have to do is prepare it? Yes. And who would produce and distribute it then? Existing staff. Okay. So. Yeah. I mean, we have an administrative staff Talk member, so essentially you would get a product from somebody and then that would be handed over to the staff member who probably gets paid a lot less than the board clerk does to do okay. clerical work. So you, you, okay. Yeah, these are all suggestions that we talked about at the meeting. The meeting, okay. And approved. <clears throat> so uh, I have a question. How would the, um, in one, two, three, four, how would the, the person communicate with the whole board and coordinating meetings of the board? I mean, that's it, it, rather than, it seems like board chair and executive director, that kind of narrows it down. They can have a contact person, but you're saying no, you want uh, want them to communicate to the whole board? It doesn't that happen during the meetings? Right. Yes. So because the, okay. the board clerk takes notes and we all give input, and okay. that's what the board clerk does, so that we all have input in what's happening. You know, like there's a question, what do we want in the next meeting and all that. You know, those things. And had one other thing. I, I was looking at kind of salary ranges, and it started out at 25, went up to 40, now it's at 30. Was there any discussion about oh, the, the it level? It never became 40. It never did? <laughs> That's okay. what we were I just, talking about. Yeah. It used 25. to be. I mean, it the, used to be 40. It used to be 40? Okay. So we, uh, oh. Well. And while that does seem high, there's a couple of things that I have to say to that. It started on 30. Board okay. clerk is a very specific position that requires a specific skill set, which puts you above a general clerical, mm -hmm. usually. And um, it's a non-benefited independent contractor, so the soft costs are in there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's a straight mm -hmm. cost, not, there's no accruals and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is also a little higher than what you would normally see. I so would the think. 30 is okay that we okay, decided so on the 30 okay. uh, at the Well, I was just looking in here, and when you add the thing, it's, it's somewhat similar to one of the positions we have here to consider the benefits. So that's fine. Can I ask the, the reason for removing the Roberts Rules of Order? Um, I put it down at the bottom it under desirable well. qualifications. So it goes from a, it, I'm just wondering the reason. So is it going from a minimum qualification, like you have to have it, to it's desirable? Because generally the chair of the board is the parliamentarian of the board. So is that the move, though? Is it's going from, like, it has to be, you have to have that working well, knowledge to that. it's just it's desirable? It sets you ahead of the pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah, that seemed fine to me. This okay. point zero is valid. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there a motion to accept the? I'd like to move that we accept this version of the board clerks. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Can I, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that's four or four point one or thirteen point one now. And then uh, we put on 13.2 uh, executive search. There's one other thing. Oh, excuse me. Um, appointment. That's true. That's the right. appointment part of it, which. Part continue from last time. I've done this in the past with other boards where it, it seems a little clunky, but it gives the board a little bit of flexibility um, to maybe appoint a designee to um, contact a selected candidate and um, negotiate an offer for the position based on this. And so um, I, I would make the motion that the board um, designate a representative to um, contact a selected individual and negotiate um, a independent contractor contract for the board clerk position. You know, I'm kind of curious who the selected person is because, anyhow, we'll see what a second. Second. So you moved that the board designate a representative to contact and negotiate with a someone to take this job? Yep. Okay. So. And there's okay. a second. 
Okay, now I, can we talk about sure. the motion? Yeah. My sense is this is something I would assign to the uh, search committee and let them, you know, do both of them at the same time, because uh, that item wasn't on there, and I, I feel uncomfortable that uh, we're going out. I have no idea who it is. I don't know. Have any idea who will apply? But I'd, I'd feel more comfortable if the search committee handled this myself. The only problem that I see with that is that part of this position is to get our elections going. And, you know, because essentially we just called for a member election. And um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we have to do to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And the position of the board clerk is one that pretty much says, this is this is how you go forward. It was it was recommended from last meeting to make the decision tonight. And as far as the um, the designee from the board, could we could we just indicate that in the motion, or do we sure. have to then come back to that and then well, decide? I'd like to know who, who who's going to go talk to who. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, could I, I don't know that we need to be specific about who. That, that designee is going to be talking to because that in reality they could talk to multiple people correct mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily know that we need to know that but I think that we should designate somebody from the board to actually do that as part of the motion but the motion said we would designate a board member so what we can vote first on the first yeah so, yeah, if, we, so if this motion passes then we have to come back to it and then designate a board member next yeah. is that Unless you want to do it in the motion. I mean, I'd amend the motion to designate the person well, to go. You, and you made a motion, so you can amend it. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Well, you, you can amend your own motion. More specific. Well, actually, she didn't. You didn't make, uh, you, you didn't make the motion. So oh, I made the motion. That's right. You did. And no, you I didn't even second it. She seconded it. Yeah. Yeah. Tess made, made the motion. motion. She yeah, she made the motion, okay. and I seconded it. And then I have to agree with her to second it. But she's, yes, so you better, better come out good, Tess. <laughs> Tess, <laughs> can I ask you a question before you? Sure. Um, so your purpose in doing that is to make sure that that, that that position is filled as soon as possible? Yes. Or it's to get a certain person? It's to be filled as soon as possible. possible. Because it deals with the election. Not because right. it's not, because it's an independent contractor, we're not having to um, follow the procedures that we would follow for hiring a regular staff member. Right. So, but your motion is to for one person to talk to one person. Could it be one person to initiate that process? Yes. And then. So maybe I wasn't really clear. It was mostly just to kind of have a board designee to get going on it. To get out there and select a candidate to talk to people and and bring and somebody so back to the board at the June. No, if you're going to have for the election, they have to come back before then. Yeah. So and if the board's not comfortable with that motion, I can withdraw it. We can start something else. I so mean, you're you're concerned if you if we did a search committee, how fast could that position be filled? Do you think? I mean, with that well, search because we're not going to have a search committee till. I mean, what are the options? Well, maybe maybe a just excuse me. Go ahead if you're finishing up. No, I like I like that you're all in it. So go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I somehow I could see what the, the the issue is, and I don't have any problem with that. What I, I am worried about is the process, and I'd feel more comfortable if we're just offering a board clerk position for a short period of time during this transition, because what happens? We'll go find somebody real fast. If I know it's contract, it it, it just kind of strikes me as being a problem. So. Uh, if you want to go find an interim one for a month to handle the election, then I would agree with that, and then go through a regular process for the rest of the time, that would be fine too. But I, I don't want to go hire somebody like this, and then that person is here for, let's say, two years, and it was just, you know, kind of a very quick process. That just, it just strikes me as wrong. I can see why it would be good to have somebody to help with the election. So uh, I, I would. I, I won't support this motion, but I would support one to offer it for an interim period and at the same time allow the search committee to open that position up to see who you want to get. So there's a, a little bit of choice in the process. What it would mean is, because today is the, the 10th, 
the election isn't going to be finished till the 25th, so you probably want to do either a month and a half. Okay, a month, two months. Or two months. Two months, yeah. Well, and I just... The only thing I have to say about that is that the executive director search committee historically has contained a staff member. And what I'm saying that makes this position unique is that this position serves at the pleasure of the board yeah. and answers to the board. Well, so well, I, it's could not you a combine what, what you person. both are saying? I mean, would it be okay with you if you, uh, you know, if you, could you entertain an amendment of your motion where it says for two months, yeah. you know? And then, you know, could be extended. Well, I'd withdraw my motion so that we can get something that's clearer and everybody's more comfortable with because it seems like that approach isn't an approach that people feel comfortable with, and so that's fine. I mean, I've tried it in other boards. If it's not comfortable, Shall that's I fine. Shall I make the motion? Go ahead, try. So I'd like to make a motion that uh, we appoint a designee from the board who goes in um, search for a board clerk for a period of at least two months, could be more, but at least two months, to uh, help us through the period of the election and be the board clerk as described in, in this job description. Second. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? Um, yes. So is the... So is the designee to go get one and bring one back? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Well, I, I would put it in a way is to seek a, 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 Sorry to be a, simplistic. A, a qualified candidate to fill a position for uh, two months and uh, that meets these qualifications. Yeah. Put it in kind of a more elegant sense. Right. And um, You're just trying to pull a chain. You can count on you for that. Okay, call for the question. Okay. Adam, did you want to say something? Not sorry. All right. Okay, we're going to have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And who is uh, the designee? I'll move that we appoint the chair and the vice chair to be co designees to do the recruitment process. I'll second that. Um, okay. Well, the vice chair is here, the chair is in uh, Yeah, well, that's, when you're sick, you just take what you get. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to, is, is there any discussion on that? Uh, since this reports to the secretary, although the secretary is not here. Right, that's an idea. I was wondering if the secretary was the appropriate person. I don't have a problem with being the person. I just wanted to ask, is the secretary the appropriate person since... Well, I actually thought about that, and he runs a small business. That doesn't mean he's not qualified to do it, but I wonder if he has the time. Um, well, you know, the other way to take the motion is, well, I'll leave my motion the way it is, and we'll see where, where it goes. We're putting a lot of stress on the chair, who also runs a small business, yeah. and, and, the, um, yeah. and the vice chair. To, to you know, there's other people that um, could help out. I mean, you know, we're we're in this together. We're we're going through a very difficult time, and we're in this together. And I see constantly the same. You know, we already have the executive committee that's going to run. You know, a lot of things during the time that our ED is absent. I, I think there's just a lot of stress. I mean, I know you go on vacation, but yeah. well, but maybe what I'll do. This is I I don't feel overwhelmingly uh, wed to my motion. I'll just withdraw it so we can talk about it some more. Tess withdrew her motion, I'll withdraw mine. And uh, yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to move that we designate uh, Tess and the vice chair um, to move forward with contacting an independent contractor for the board clerk. I'll second that. Here we have another motion about who should do this. And we're both here. That's in well, that, in well that's one, one thing, Adam, I, I would, I, 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 would I, I'd, I'd like to, I was thinking of what uh, you were saying, this person is actually under the supervision of the secretary, mm -hmm. and that you know, kind of struck me. I would wonder if you'd entertain a motion to have the uh, tests and the secretary do it, because the person is technically, according to this description, under the secretary. So are you asking for a friendly amendment? 
So I'll amend the motion to designate Tess and the Secretary James um, to conduct the search for the independent contractor board clerk. I'll second that. Okay. Is that okay with you? Sounds good. Okay, good. Sounds like a much perfected motion. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, third time's a charm. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, I'll, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're through with four. We have one more. 13-1. We have 13-2, which is to appoint an executive search committee to find an executive director for the interim period. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? We're looking for public comment. So, and we have Tess coming, yes. Um, I would like to make a motion to appoint Adam and um, Keith and um, Jennifer. Yep. Or Matilda. I, I don't. That would be great. <laughs> I second that motion. <laughs> okay. So, so you wouldn't be interested? No. Okay. Right so it would be Adam, myself, yes. Keith, Matilda. As a executive director search committee. Any uh, any charge? Um, to essentially craft a job spec, advertise it, or direct it to be advertised, um, conduct interviews, and return at the June 29th meeting with uh, two or three applicants for interview. Second. Yes, actually. I forgot to add that. You mentioned it before, so I assumed it was part Sorry, of Sorry, I meant to. Yes. Well, you were just appointing board members. I mean, right. there's always a staff member on it. Right. And. And staff. Yeah, Can staff I, would be included. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a second. Did we have a second? Yes, he seconded. Okay. So yeah, if you want to have public comment, lock your camera down. Come on over. <laughs> Put the camera. Okay. <laughs> that myself, that <laughs> Interesting uh, watching at home. <laughs> I think anybody is. Hello, board. David Perez. Um, I would just like to make a comment in re since you're talking about uh, um, you're talking about joining up with another corporation. We don't know that we're going to need an executive director. I mean, I don't know. You're, if you're going to be spending all this money to find an executive director and then we're not even going to need an executive director, I think it's going to be pretty hard to find somebody who's going to be willing to put up with how, whatever short or long time span that we're talking about here. As far as the job goes, I don't think we're going to get any good applicants. If we're going to tell, if we're going to get all these good applicants and all of a sudden tell them, oh, by the way, you're only going to be here for three months because we're joining up with, a, with another group of people that are taking this over, I don't think that's a real good idea. So. I think you're kind of spinning your wheels on a, on a, on a, a general dir a director right now. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, are, are we talking about till the end we, of the year? We are though? aware of that, but the circumstances are such that we, uh, we need to do an interim ED, and there are several options. But your point is well taken, and, and we are aware of it, and we're really sad to have to, you know, have to do that, but um, we, we will be very careful. Well, and also if we don't have qualified candidates, uh, we've discussed several options that we can proceed with, uh, and we'll just see what happens during this process. And then the, the, the only other thing I would add is that, um, uh, you know, if we don't get qualified candidates, that's one thing, but we could very well get somebody that's very stellar. And in, even in the, in the reality of a merger, there could be a place for that person in exactly. the future in the merger yeah. organization as an assistant director or some 
position. Yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even say that on air, so to speak, because when you look at the finances, it'll be really that no promises can be made to the yeah, person. Yeah, and I'm not saying yeah, I'm no, making yeah, any yeah. promises. I'm just saying that there is potential for that person to have a life beyond just an interim, if if that's you know the stellar candidate that we get. Yes, it does. Um, I would tend to agree with the member of the public. However, we have to move forward until we hear from the membership what, what's going to happen. I mean, we, we can't put the organization in a position where we're in the lurch because we're, uh, what we've tried to do is really employ all the our alternatives that are available to us at this time. One, to call for a meeting of the membership. One, to um, get somebody in there on an interim basis. I mean, because we just don't know how it's going to pan out. And I think it would be, we would be remiss if we weren't trying to um, address each of these situations that could come to fruition that we just won't know for another month or so. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I hear what you're saying, and I wonder about it myself. Um, I think that the expenses will be fairly small, um, limited to print ads, and then there are national associations that we can put noticing out on. So I don't expect that we're going to probably spend much more than about $500 for print ads and stuff like that. You mean that. we're not going to have executive lunches? And no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Call for the question. Yeah, no other, no other comments. Uh, can I get all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same. May as well repeat the motion one more time so well, we, people know what we voted on. We just voted to appoint board members. So the second part would be to, and, and those board members were uh, Adam Wade, Tess Fitzgerald, Keith Gudger, and Matilda Rand. Um, then there's the issue of the, the member. There should be a staff member. Staff member. Yes. And I don't know how this, the board wants to deal with that. If the board wants to ask the staff to choose their own and and that's usually a very good. Uh, I mean, that's kind of how it's rolled in the past. Yes. Very um, good approach. Can we ask Kathy how it's done in the past? The question was, do you know how it's done in the past? I mean, I thought in the past didn't the staff nominate someone from amongst their ranks and? Oh. Yeah, the, the last time they. Well, they appointed me. Okay. Well, you have them up some votes. <laughs> yeah, will you ask them? It was the time before. But yeah, both the staff and the staff. Okay. They decide who they want to represent, uh, to represent. Yeah. yeah. And can, have great. the staff decide. And can you contact us? Because, sure. uh, you know, like quick. <laughs> you know, the next opportunity that you have, because we want to start this rolling and we just want the staff to be advised. She said tomorrow. And, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the confusion, but thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, Another. Okay. Anything else? So. Okay. A move we adjourn. Any seconds? Seconds. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's do it. it thank you, everyone. Oh, and I specifically want to thank the members uh, that have volunteered to make this production happen. Um, we have David Perez. Kathy D'Angelo, Karen Scott, and we have David Lefty in audio, and I know Ryan's here, and if there's someone else doing CG, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know who it is. Nobody. Good night. <laughs>